Now I know, I know what you're going to say. You've been talking about it for a while, Jeff, that your tribal chief needed somebody worthy of the main event of SummerSlam as an opponent, and you wanted it to be John Cena, and you've got it. So of course now you're going to bitch about something related to it or something about it, because that's what you do, because that's what wrestling fans do. Bark, bark, bark. That's what you do. That's what you're going to say, right? Yeah, maybe. A little bit. But I really, really think this is an important PSA, a public service announcement. Because a lot of folks need to touch earth on this. Need to be reconnected with reality. Let's, let's be honest here. It's a friendly reminder to all of you that John Cena still sucks. He absolutely does. And if anything, and if anything, seeing him come back this time should shine an even bigger, brighter, hotter, badder light on it. Like, even for those of you that grew up on Cena, even those of you that grew up on the hustle, loyalty, and respecting, look at Timmy, look at Timmy, and got sucked into the decade plus propaganda of WWE, pushing him as a megastar, propping him up as the top dude, no matter what anything else was out there. No matter what the fans were saying, no matter what the ratings were saying, no matter what the live event attendance was saying, no matter what. You bought into that and you think he's an all-time great and you think he's all of these things and you have grown up in a time and place where Cena's your Hogan, he's your Austin, he's your Rock. Remind the significant difference between him and those others, you know, actual real deal, like all-time megastars that John Cena absolutely positively fucking is not. All John Cena is is a great value version of the fucking rock. Oh, he's not, you tell me? Isn't this the same John Cena that for years used to throw the little cheap shots and pot shots at Dwayne because Dwayne went to Hollywood and John Cena loves this place and he's WWE for life and you can't take it away from him. Yet, what did you fucking know, like the typical hypocrite that you've always known John Cena to be, the character and the person, He's going to sit there first chance he gets and do what Dwayne does. And of course, do it on a vastly inferior level to him. He couldn't wait to make the jump himself to freaking Hollywood. Uh, by the way, I don't blame him for that. The hell would you want to sit there and wrestle on the road 180, 200 nights a damn year and make far less than what you're actually worth? As much as I don't like Cena, I, I can even say for Cena, I have no doubt that he's vastly underpaid by WWE. Like wrestlers in general makes me wonder sometimes why the hell anybody would want to be in professional wrestling. These guys are so massively, significantly underpaid compared to other entertainers and actors and so forth. It's ridiculous. Like hell yeah, you should go do TV. You should go do movies. Do voiceover work. Do whatever the hell you can. Go even bigger and mainstream. I do not begrudge John Cena for that for one freaking second. Nobody else should either. What we can knock him for is his blatant hypocrisy, where when it served his purposes for his time, it was a problem when Dwayne did it. But now that John Cena does it, it's fucking okay. And I know some people are getting caught up in the fact of, well, you don't see John Cena as often, so it's not as big of a deal, and it's like a nice little nostalgia thing. There is nothing nice about the nostalgia here, folks. I understand sometimes absence makes the heart grow fucking fonder, but sometimes it clouds your judgment and makes you an idiot. Roman said it best. It's fucking missionary John. It's the same shit all the time. It's hard to have a nostalgia pop where, yes, maybe the guy's been gone for a little over a year, but he comes back and, like always, he's literally the damn same the same damn John Deere ass color scheme, the same damn hustle, loyalty, respect crap, the same promos, the same walk, the same act, the same look, minus some hair on the top of his head. Hey, John, I understand. <laughs> it happens when we get into our 40s, damn it. 
But there's no nostalgia pop here. Maybe that first night because you're like, oh man, this feels big and I don't disagree. It feels big. Him and Roman at, Rus at SummerSlam. That is big. Certainly is. Worthy of the main event of SummerSlam. But it doesn't change the fact that he was boring 10 years ago and he still fucking is now. And I think what's happened has been kind of a masterstroke by Cena and WWE is that in recent years, he started to put people over when it doesn't freaking matter anymore. Who gives a crap if he put over The Fiend in that freaking Firefly Funhouse match at WrestleMania 36 when he didn't do the correct honors like the fuck he should have a few years before at Mania. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Like, that's where that Bray Wyatt Eater of Pins bullshit began, was crap like that. It was literally a decade of doom of destruction of the John Cena era atop WWE. Build them up to tear them down. Oh, not build up John Cena to tear them down, build up others so that way they can just be fed to the freaking Cena monster. All the while, over the course of that decade, you've got a couple of million fans here in the U.S., that decide they don't want this shit anymore. They're not watching it anymore. John Cena's such a big freaking megastar, and yet all the while, especially when he got to the tail end of his freaking run, he sits there and he's in front of two-thirds full arenas. Half-empty arenas. That ain't no damn Hogan, Andre, Austin Rock-level megastar, you dipshits. He was a prop. A protectionist prop. The most valuable commodity of that fortunate four of Cena, Orton, Edge, and Batista, according to the WWE. He was the company guy. He was the yes man. He was the prop that they could rely upon to do just enough to allow them to make a certain amount of money to be safe because they no longer wanted to be in the business of making massive stars, especially after the Brock Lesnar crap in 2004. The last time they tried to make a next big thing, it backfired on them. And they said, whoa, 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 whoa. We can't do that anymore. So we're going to take somebody that we can put just enough behind, who has just enough traits, that we can sit there and have him totally go above and beyond what his actual talent suggests he should be. Like he was good on the mic, but a lot of times his promos were nonsensical, were bullshit, they were corny, they were bad, even if you're a kid. His character work was absolutely atrocious. There was no evolution. There was no change. He was literally the same dude. He's still the same damn dude. Missionary John, our tribal chief, gave him that label and it's totally freaking appropriate. Other characters evolve and change over time. This asshole doesn't. He still wants to come back in his fucking 40s in 2021 and act like it's 2007 all over again. He wants everybody to cheer boo him. No. That means I'm goddamn selfish. Change stuff up. Go in a different direction. Freshen up for a damn change. It's not the actual interesting John Cena of late 2002 to 2004. The young, hungry, aggressive, in-your-face rapping Cena. That was a great character. The C-Nation hustle loyalty respect was that vanilla white bread corporate bullshit champion... And it's disgusting that people for years have spent all their efforts and energies trying to defend this guy and make excuses for him, and I ain't fucking having it. All those people over the years, and I don't need to list them off. You just, SummerSlam 2010 is just one of many notable examples over the damn years. I gave the Bray Wyatt example too. Again, I could go on and on and on. All the people that Cena buried, and you're going to say, well, that was... John Cena was a fucking top guy for a decade. All the history of the top people in WWE doing political power plays and shit. You've even heard the stories from Edge and Jericho. They would know better than you talking about the 2010 crap. I think about the Alex Riley and all these other things. Like John Cena buried as many people as anybody in fucking history of that company. The reason the product's so bad today in part you wonder sometimes is why? Because when they should have been building up the next generation... To take over from Cena, envisioning the long-term game, they were playing the finite game because they were trying to maximize for their quarterly earnings for the freaking shareholders so they can pay out a crappy-ass dividend. And they just obliterated an entire generation of talent in order to prop up this dude. Oh, they're putting the people over. It's too freaking late now. It don't mean any damn thing. 
It's like when Austin finally put over the rock at WrestleMania 19. That's a nice couple years too fucking late for that. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? No. The character being the freaking same is lame as hell. He never evolved. He never changed. He never did anything different. That is boring. It should not be commended. The whole, he can't wrestle crap, you know, that's, that's a very subjective thing because so many people, even your favorite spot monkeys on the indies are in an AEW or an ROH or New Japan. Like they do the same type of chain wrestling. They do the same type of high spots and moves. Like that's just as repetitive. So I'm not even throwing that in there. I could talk about the shitty storytelling in his matches. Where he's sitting there and selling a bunch of crap, but all of a sudden he gets up like nothing fucking happens and he goes into uber ultimate warrior mode. Where at least even warrior would sit there and try to build up to and sell it. He's like, Cena said, nope, fuck that. Like you can point to storyline after storyline, feud after feud, program after program, where this bullshit played out. Where John Cena is supposed to be the baby face that the fans get behind, but instead he's resented to the point that he's largely booed. To where they have to create this narrative about whether you boo or you cheer. We're in the reaction era now. We're in the reaction business and it doesn't matter what you do. If it didn't fucking matter, then why would you pump fucking cheers in all these years over all the times that John Cena got booed at WrestleMania and other damn shows and pay-per-views? Give me a fucking break. This asshole for over a decade was presented as a baby face and yet so many things about him, he wasn't overcoming the obstacles. He was the goddamn obstacle. He couldn't do his damn job right. And you're going to tell me this is an all-time great? And of course, meanwhile, predictably, now that he's back, here comes WWE pushing that goat narrative bullshit I told you years ago they were going to do. Big fucking surprise there. What's the appeal? Why do people think this guy is so great? Like, I hate to even sit there in 2021 and do a John Cena sucks video that this feels played out and kind of dumb. And it is, to be clear, it is. But it also feels timely and appropriate. Because you got a lot of people forgetting about the damage that John Cena freaking did. And he did. He drove away fans, a couple million of them. He absolutely did. He helped obliterate with his breakfast club business bullshit an entire next generation of talent. He did. He absolutely did. And now he's coming back to put him over when it's too damn late and it doesn't mean the same. The damage has already been done, John. You're the same fucking pathetic ass character in 2021 that you were basically in 2005. Like, where's the appeal there? You're basically just coming across like another guy in his 40s experiencing a midlife crisis. And believe me, as somebody who's going through that right now, I recognize it and it's not becoming of you. Do something different. Shake shit up. It's just astounding to me how quickly people forget. And it doesn't help when you've had some of his I'm going to go against the grain and defend John Cena. And I'm going to provide some of these half-truths and some of these misleading statements to defend him because I'm not going to be negative like that and blah, 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 and all that other bullshit. If you say, well, John Cena is bigger than any star that they have in the company now, well, yeah. Because he was pounded down people's throats for over a fucking decade. Because when he was on top, more people watched more people stopped watching because of him! So of course nobody's going to be fucking bigger than he is! Hell's wrong with you! We need people talk about the most overrated superstar in WWE history. You can make big cases for Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and God Ugga and Randy Orton. Certainly worthy of consideration. But rest assured, there is no question beyond a shadow of a doubt that the most overrated WWE superstar of all time beyond question is John Cena. Period. He sucked 10 years ago. And no matter what you try to say or what you forget about the past, he still sucks now.